Apple has just released a quite big update to the SwiftUI scroll view. There's a new scroll position, scroll transition, content margin and much more. I will show you all of the new changes and how easy it is right now to create a custom carousel view. Let's get started. This is what we will be building using the new changes in the scroll view. Simple and easy carousel with a custom transition. You can swipe left and right. Tap on a card to go to the next one. Also use buttons to change cards. Each time a card goes off the screen, it will be animated with a custom transition. Okay, so I have a simple app that has a horizontal scroll view. Inside scroll view there is the H stack with bunch of images. We are iterating over the places array. Each place has a name and an image. The image is just a file name saved inside the asset catalog. Let's modify scroll view and add a couple of improvements. First of all, as you can probably tell, we could use some padding here. But if we will add it to the scroll view like this, it will work, but when you scroll those slides will uh, look weird. It looks like something has been chopped off here. In iOS 17 there is this new modifier, Save Area Padding. By using it you can add additional padding to the scroll view, this time within the safe area of a view. It works as expected. There is additional padding and it doesn't feel like something has been chopped off. Now let's improve those images a little bit and add a shadow to it. It looks better, but the shadow on the bottom is clipped. Fortunately, in the iOS 17, Apple has introduced this new view modifier, Scroll Clip Disabled. By adding it to your scroll view, it will disable the content clipping. This is much better now. You can also add a boolean parameter and change it on the fly like in this documentation example. Right now our carousel gallery scroll view works just like our regular scroll view. When you swipe it, there is a chance that it may stop in a weird middle position like this. In iOS 17, there is this new scroll target behavior modifier. It allows you to change the scroll behavior and use a custom logic to handle it. You can provide your own scroll target behavior or use one of the built-in behaviors provided by the Swift UI. First one is the paging behavior. When you use it and start swiping, it will automatically try to divide your scroll view into pages. In this example, it doesn't work well as we have this additional padding here and photos are not taking the whole width of the screen. But there is this additional new Swift UI modifier added in iOS 17, the container relative frame. This one will position the image view within an invisible frame with a size relative to the nearest container. In this case, it will be the H stack. This way, each photo will take the whole width and be centered. It works great, but it's not something that I wanted to do, so I'll just remove it and change the scroll target behavior to the second available option, which is the view aligned. But in order for this one to work, we need to add another new modifier, scroll target layout. This one is pretty straightforward. It tells the scroll target behavior, which element is the scroll target. When you scroll, you will see that it stops right on the edge of each photo. And this is something that I was looking for. Okay, it looks good, but we can improve it and add additional transition to the scroll view elements. In the iOS 17, there is a new scroll transition modifier. It applies this given transition, animating between the phases of the transition as this view appears and disappears within the visible space. This first top leading parameter is the configuration that drives the transition when the view is about to appear at the edge of the vertical scroll view or the leading edge of the horizontal scroll view. So in this case it will be just leading and trailing.
and this is a struct with couple of predefined elements. Animated. This one will automatically animate the view. The identity. This one will create a configuration that does not change the view. And the interactive. This one is something that we are looking for. It will create a configuration that interpolates the transitions effect, so the effect will follow the scroll movement. This closure returns a new effect that we can modify, and it will affect the scroll transition. So let's try to apply a scale effect to it. We are using the face value here. That can be used to scale or otherwise modify effects. It returns minus one when it is in the top leading face, zero when in the identity phase, and one when it is in the bottom trailing phase. Looks like this is a range of values from minus one to one, as when we scroll, those photos are changing uh, the scale from zero to regular size. And when it is minus one, it is flipped. Now let's try to set it to one and subtract the face value. Okay, so on the leading side, when the photo is transitioned to leave the view, we are subtracting one from value of one, it's getting close to zero. That's why the photo scale is decreasing. The trailing side, on the other hand, we have a minus one value inside the face value. So when, the, when we subtract the negative value, it will be one minus minus one. We upscale the photo two times. That's why the photo is getting bigger. To fix this, we just need to get the absolute value of face and subtract it from one. This is much better. Let's change the opacity the same way. Okay, this is great. Let's add now the last element to this scroll transition, which is the 3D rotation. We need to set an angle for the rotation. Face value itself will not be enough. That's why we multiply it by 90 degree. For the axis, let's start with the X axis. Let's switch it to the y-axis. And this is the effect that I was looking for. We can also check the z-axis. Looks interesting, but yeah, let's get back to the previous one. All right, <laughs> we are almost there. I want to show you one more new scroll view modifier in the iOS 17, which is the scroll position. It comes with two variants, scroll position with initial anchor and scroll position with ID. The first one with an anchor, it associates uh, an anchor to control which part of the scroll views content should be initially rendered. When it is set to center, as you can see, the scroll view starts in the middle here. Let's change it to trailing. So this modifier basically just sets the initial scroll view position. The other variant with ID is a different story. To set it up, we need to provide a binding to it. So let's add a state variable and set it as ID. So now this binding will be updated when a scroll view scrolls it will be set to a value of the displayed place. Keep in mind that this is possible and it works because we previously added this modifier, scroll target layout. Let's add this new variable as a photo title. Right now, when you scroll, the place value is being updated with the proper place. There is one issue though. At this point, you can't set the anchor for the scroll target layout. That's why when you scroll to the last element, it will have a hard time updating to the proper value. I hope that this will be added in the next release. Okay, because this is a binding, it not only updates the place variable when you scroll, it also scrolls when you change the place variable value. Inside on appear, let's assign the place variable to the last element from places. 
It immediately scrolls to the last element. Let's change it to the second element. This way, each time you change the place value, it will automatically scroll there. Knowing this, we can add a gesture recognizer to the photo and set the place variable to this element. When you tap next photo, it will put the next place value to the place variable. And scroll position ID will automatically move scroll view to the proper photo position. To make it look a little better, let's add the animation to it. This is much better now. Now we can tap to go to the next element, but we can't go back as the previous photo is not visible. We can of course scroll, but let's add additional buttons for scrolling. Below the scroll view, we will add an H stack with buttons. We can use image with SF symbols as a label for button. Let's add some padding. Now when a user will tap back button, we need to unwrap the place variable, then try to find it inside places array. And make sure that index is greater than zero. Otherwise we will go out of bounds for the array. Knowing the index of current place, we can get the previous one. It works as expected, but we also need to add the animation. All right, now let's uh, do the same for the right button. We can actually copy this. Just make sure that the index is smaller than all elements in the array minus one. And don't forget to change this one. It would be great to know when we will reach the end or the beginning of the list. We can easily add this to the buttons. The button will be disabled when the place equals to the first place in the array of places. The same goes for the second button, just change it to the last. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. More videos covering news from DubDub are coming. Please consider subscribing for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.